Hello guys, welcome back to our channel. Today we are in Venice, which is one of our favorite city and one of the best cities Italy has to offer. Today we're going to be exploring usual touristic spots like Rialto Bridge, San Marco Square, but we're also trying to find more unique hidden gems, for example the Jewish Quarter. And of course along the way we're going to be trying some typical snacks. So let's get started. <laughs> Good morning! So we are just at Vittorio Veneto train station. We are going to catch a train to Venice. It takes about an hour, but we've been staying here for the past few days with Danny's parents. So it's only a very short journey. So it is really, really busy. As you come out of the station, obviously, you just need to take care for a pickpocket. Oh. So our first stop is going to be the Jewish Ghetto in the Canareggio district. Just go outside of the train station, turn left and just follow the canal. So on the way to the Jewish ghetto you find all these restaurants which in my opinion are like tourist traps but yeah I wouldn't recommend you to eat here. So what's really nice about visiting the Jewish ghetto first is that after the kind of busyness as you exit the station, the Jewish ghetto is actually a lot quieter. You can escape the touristy area and just have a moment of calm before you explore the rest of the island. But basically we're visiting today on a Saturday, so a lot of the um, Jewish owned restaurants are closed because of their religious holiday, but the place is still thriving. So the Jewish ghetto was built in the 1560s and it was the first Jewish ghetto in the world. The Jewish community was restricted to live just in this area and also to serve some specific trades. In fact, behind me, you will be able to see uh, one of the first phone shops where the Jewish community was engaged in to resell uh, items in exchange of money. So the weather in Venice is actually really nice considering it's April. It's very, very busy with tourists, uh, which makes me feel happy that Venice is back after COVID. The last time me and Maya we've been here was actually during the pandemic and the city was empty. It was <laughs> like a ghost city. <laughs> So we are now on our way to, let's say, a typical Venetian uh, cecchetti place. Uh, cecchetti means like finger food, so we're gonna go to this place called Aqua and Mice. It's on the way to Rialto Bridge, which we're gonna show you later. <laughs> So we managed to order some food in, in the 
this uh, place called Aqua Mice. It was really busy, so we got Fritura Mista, which is a mixed uh, fish. The birds eat enough. The birds eat enough. Food. So before uh, the pigeon started to eating our food, we were trying to explain that we stopped for lunch at Aqua and Mice. So we got uh, Fritura Mista, which is a mixed uh, fried fish and also a few uh, fried bacala balls with an artichock. Okay, so we're currently standing on top of the Rialto Bridge. Venice is so busy right now, but let me just say a few fun facts about the bridge. So it's considered one of the engineering masterpieces of Venice. It was built in 1591. It's mainly made out of this white stone, which makes it really, really look modern and really nice. It doesn't serve the purpose of only crossing from one side to another one, but it's also a continuation of shopping. You can find two different rows of shops selling mainly souvenirs and other items reminding of Venice and Venetian culture. And this is basically the freeway of Venice, where you can see boats that take people, which serve the purpose of buses, then obviously classic gondolas, really nice and historical boats which are served like taxis over there and mainly restaurants on one side and the other one of the canal now we're on our way to a bookshop like a quirky store where they're known for unusual kind of displays and apparently there's also a few resident cats that live inside there So we're currently queuing to get in, into this library and we actually didn't expect that it's going to be a queue. <laughs> so we are done with the library and now we are on our way to San Marco Square which is the main city centre of Venice. Let's go! So we're trying to film all our different stops that we want to see in just six hours so we're in a really big rush we're on a tight schedule everything for you guys so make sure to like the video subscribe to the channel and comment down below where do you want to see us going next Obviously in between all the stops that we're showing you there is so many beautiful streets and places that you can explore but I would definitely recommend having Google Maps because it's so easy to get lost. <laughs> Okay, so finally we are in San Marco Square. So behind us uh, you can see the San Marco Basilica, which is one of the most beautiful basilicas that you can find in Italy. And it's really well known for its colorful mosaic that are all across the front side of the basilica. So because we are very tight on our schedule, we don't have time to visit the Campanile of San Marco, which is San Marco's tower that offers the best panoramic view of the city. So if you guys have more time than us, of course, I would recommend you definitely to do so. And this is the entrance to the Campanile of San Marco.
So we're on our way in quite of a rush to Peggy Guggenheim and um, we have tickets allocated for a specific time but it took us so long to get across the river so I'm really hoping we can get in even though we're five minutes late because we tried to come before and we didn't realise it was ticketed and it's always super busy. So we're currently in the Peggy Museum Garden. We managed to get in even though we were 10 minutes late for our ticket. But Peggy Guggenheim was a famous heiress and this is her kind of house and where she keeps her private art collection. So it's a very, very special museum. So Peggy Museum was founded in 1951 and is a combination of 200 works of art. Some of them are from Salvador Dali, Rotko. The museum is a former villa from Peggy Guggenheim, once owned by a Venetian family called the Venier family. To be a private art collector, I must say that it was impressive considering the amount of paintings she had from famous painters such as Picasso, Salvador Dali, Kalvinsky. Um, so it was like really nice and worth the money. Okay, so we are done with Peggy Museum. It was like an explosion of art and our eyes are basically bleeding. <laughs> so now we are looking for an aperitif place because we think we deserve an April Spritz now and some Chiketti. And uh, after that, we just have a few more stops. We're gonna go to the patisserie, a typical Venetian patisserie. And yeah, and then just a few more stop, stops along the way. The next stop is a historical Venetian patisserie called Pasticceria Tonolo. about Venice is that anywhere you can find these signs so this one says that to the train station is that way so even though it looks like a labyrinth you can find your way out somewhere yeah. 